Today's episode is sponsored by the Patriot Gold Group. Here in part four, we will lay out the entire sordid Biden crime family's grafting and extortion, the pending impeachment proceedings, as well as Biden selling out his office of vice president for great profit and how he could be tried for treason. Joseph Biden and his family have been getting very wealthy by illegal means for for many years. Their illegitimate business contacts, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, violations of U.S. and international sanctions against specific business partners, and failing to file proper, accurate, and often fraudulent IRS tax returns. But was that all? When Joe Biden left the Senate to become vice president, his reported net worth was just above $20,000. By the time you viewers see this, that wealth factor is now $32 million. Let's see how they did it. How did Joe Biden and his family become multimillionaires in such short time on his government salary with no appreciable businesses? Who else was involved in covering up for the Biden crime family? How deep is the corruption? Does Biden's corruption only involve illegal financial gains? Do we have a double standard of justice? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, military veteran, historian, author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. Well, as far as the lies go, Biden had also said that he taught constitutional law for around 21 years. Well, we'll just leave that be since we know better. Getting to the main points of this episode, the FBI used 40 informants inside the Biden family over the past 15 years, and some became whistleblowers. The research team at Marco Polo included legal advisors who identified 459 violations of statutes and regulations that could lead to criminal prosecution of the Bidens and their associates. Emails from 2009 to 2019 revealed that Hunter Biden was a paid consultant for companies from China and Ukraine, and he sought similar work in other countries. In the eight years following 2009, while his father was vice president, Hunter received around $5 million for a deal he made with a rising Chinese energy conglomerate called CEFC China Energy. For 15 years, credible informants had been providing criminal information against the Bidens to the FBI field offices across the country. And every time the information has been brought to FBI headquarters, the leadership of the FBI shuts it down. That story took another twist as Representative Jim Jordan, Republican of Ohio, wrote a letter to FBI Director Christopher Wray asking for information about another FBI form FD-1023 from March 2017, which contained allegations from the same informant that foreign interests paid the Biden family millions of dollars. Senator Chuck Grassley, Republican of Iowa, upset a few liberals last year when he revealed a whistleblower came forward with information and confirmation about the existence of a June 2020 FBI form FD-1023, outlining allegations from a highly credible confidential informant that the founder of Burisma paid then-Vice President Joe Biden a $5 million bribe in exchange for helping to fire a prosecutor investigating Burisma for corruption. No one has yet to provide a legitimate explanation as to why then-Vice President Joe Biden appeared on camera in 2018 and bragged about how he pressured the president of Ukraine to fire a prosecutor who had been investigating a company that paid his son millions to sit on its board of directors. I had just heard sworn witness testimony that the Biden bribery allegations on the FD-1023 form were credible and that he referred the criminal matters originating from it to three separate U.S. attorney's offices in Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Delaware for further investigation. The FBI used this informant for many years and paid them more than $100,000, meaning the Bureau found their information quite reliable and useful. The informant also presented evidence that Biden forced his deadbeat crackhead son Hunter to give him 50% of his salaries 
on all the jobs he held and every bribe he received for being son of Joe Biden and selling his father's position for profit. There's two things Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and J.P. Morgan agree upon. The Fed will cut rates in 2024 and record high gold prices in 2024. If you're in the stock market, rate cuts should scare you. Rate cuts are really bad news, looking like good news. The three biggest Fed drops in the S&P were in 1929, 2000, and 2007, all happening after the first Fed rate cut. Meanwhile, gold soared. As we go into an election year, there is a heightened threat of uncertainty. Isn't it time you protected your retirement with gold? Call the proud Americas of the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Mention Forgotten History and you'll always get best-in-class service from Patriots Protecting Patriots. The Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. So, call 888-925-1970 for a free investor guide today. The Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top-rated gold IRA dealer seven years in a row. Call 888-925-1970 now. The Bidens were able to launder the money through their shell corporations, which held no legitimate business purpose and provided no services or products, but one of the best methods was academic investment. The University of Pennsylvania Biden Center received around $1 million in donations from Communist China. Part of this was exposed during the House Forensic Investigation, which yielded 56 pages of fraud, money laundering, tax evasion, obstruction of justice and prosecution, bribery and influence peddling. Chinese donors also pumped millions into the University of Delaware. Money paid out to Biden family members, such as Biden's brother James, his son Hunter, Biden's daughter-in-law, possibly his wife Jill, from deals with State Energy HK Limited, a Chinese communist energy company. Their primary whistleblower also directed investigators to other payments, and the evidence shows that checks were made out to the grandchildren as well and the whistleblower's information was confirmed. In 2018, James Biden, brother of the president, even received a direct wire transfer of $600,000 himself, and the next day he wrote a check to Joe for $200,000 and stated it was a loan repayment. However, the bank audits proved that there was never a check written by Joe Biden to James in any amount, hence funneling the cash to the big guy from their OWASCO account, which was receiving the bulk of the automatic foreign wire transfers, most from China. That money was then laundered to their other offshore and shell company accounts and the Biden crime family members. What did the paid confidential informant Alexander Smirnov get, get for his efforts? The FBI he spent 14 years working for and whose intelligence over the years was confirmed by other federal witnesses and agencies was recently arrested by the FBI and accused of lying about his evidence, which had already corroborated in most cases. This followed on the heels of Anthony Bobolinsky's closed-the-door deposition under oath, a follow-up from his original statements from 2019, which the FBI and Justice Department ignored to help Biden's presidential run. The Biden DOJ is trying to silence witnesses. Even the left-wing New York Post reported, a different former Biden family associate, Rob Walker, testified on January 26th that the Biden family's business relationship with CEFC began as early as 2015 when Joe Biden was still vice president and that Joe Biden attended a meeting in early 2017 with CEFC chairman Yi Jianming, who has since gone missing in China amid corruption allegations. This testimony was corroborated by Bobolinsky, who had also handed over smartphones with texts and emails confirming what many already knew. Luckily, copies were given to Republican investigators, just had the contents of Hunter's laptop. The evidence is overwhelming. Even the liberally corrupt CNN reported, 
Tony Bobolinsky, the former business partner, was open to testifying and his attorney reached out to the office of Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss. Weiss, who was appointed as a special counsel by Attorney General Merrick Garland, did not return their calls, the sources said. Weiss's decision not to bring Bobolinsky in is the latest indication that prosecutors investigating Hunter Biden may have avoided investigating allegations about his father, President Joe Biden. Incidentally, it was Weiss who decided to indict and silence the FBI informant Alexander Smirnovkin. More information came to light. Between 2016 and 2020, $7 million was paid to Hunter from China alone, which went undeclared and taxes unpaid. Right after he took office, Biden reversed Trump's restrictions on Chinese student infiltration and CCP influence through the Confucius Institute due to the theft of intellectual property and espionage. Hunter also allegedly received $3.5 million in a wire transfer from the widow of the former mayor of Moscow, Yuri Lushkov, part of the allegations which Joe Biden had previously denied during his debate with Trump. Deficit China with ate Mexico. your lunch. All right, eight, gentlemen, percent. And, 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 China ate your lunch, no, Joe. And but, no wonder but, your son goes in and he takes out, what, he takes out uh, billions of dollars, takes out billions of dollars to manage. He makes millions of dollars. And also, while we're at true. it, why simply is it, true. just out of curiosity, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave your son three and a half million dollars. What did he true. do to deserve it? That what did he do with Barista to of deserve one hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars? None of that is true. Not an answer. Not none of that is true. Oh, really? He totally didn't get three and a half Mr. President, it's he did. Totally, Mr. President, please. Totally discredited. The bank records show the payment, but there is nothing to show exactly how much Hunter Biden received himself, and the bank, abiding by federal law along with others filled out federal suspicious activities reports to the IRS. Records show that in 2015, $3.1 million was divided up between the Biden family members, as well as an unknown sum to Hunter's business partner, Devin Archer. Part of the investigative report stated, February 14, 2014, Baturina wired $3.5 million to a Rosemont Seneca Thornton bank account for a consultancy agreement. Rosemont Seneca Thornton is an investment firm co-founded by Hunter Biden, Devin Archer, and Christopher Hines, just one of many accounts. Of great interest, the Rosemont Seneca Thornton records are not available to the public. The report also states that Rosemont Seneca Thornton served as a pass-through for Baturina's investments in a Chinese base tech startup in Buffalo, New York. The report is 87 pages long. It says, Baturina became Russia's only female billionaire when her plastics company, Inteco, received a series of Moscow municipal contracts while her husband was mayor. The report said that Biden and Baturina had a financial relationship. Hunter Biden's lawyer, George Masiris, said Biden did not get $3.5 million and that the report has a key error. He stated, Hunter Biden had no interest in and was not a co-founder of Rosemont Seneca Thornton, so the claim that he was paid $3.5 million is false, Mazira said in an email. When Mazira was asked if he could share documents to show that Hunter Biden was not a co-founder, he did not receive any money. He did not respond. The IRS whistleblowers tracking the money stated they had emails and reports proving the investigation into the Bidens was interrupted those reports were requested. This request was ignored, just like the investigation, even when the whistleblowers brought it to their superiors' attention, as well as Merrick Garland and the DOJ. What is even more incredible is that it was revealed during the investigation that in 2014, Elena Baturina supposedly closed a $100 million real estate deal with Hunter Biden's group, although there has been no paperwork to prove such a deal ever existed, but money was transferred. Again, undeclared and untaxed income was filtered through 23 shell companies. But what is Biden doing for all of this Chinese money? Well, let's take a look. He's trying to impose a mandatory purchase by all American citizens of electric cars to replace internal combustion engines. Ironically enough, China is the primary producer of the nickel batteries, the cadmium batteries, lithium batteries that operate these cars 
and the cars are also built in China. Another factor is that he is trying to push solar energy and windmill technology to replace petroleum energy, which is a very unreasonable and illogical assumption that could be done. However, China is producing most of the solar panels and the windmill technology. Wonder if the Biden crime family is getting a kickback. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer, Republican of Kentucky, stated, the impeachment case is based on a large record of evidence, including bank records and witness testimony, revealing that Joe Biden knew of and participated in his family's business dealings. In May 2023, the FBI rejected Comer's request to see the documents, saying that policy strictly limits when and how confidential human source information can be provided outside of the FBI. So, FBI Director Christopher Wray was called in before House hearings several times and asked about the documentation pertaining to the investigation. Wray and the DOJ at first denied such records even existed, but a whistleblower stated otherwise, and a copy was given to the hearing panel. Chuck Grassley himself ended up releasing the document in the open. The House Republicans investigating even threatened to hold the director of the FBI in contempt last year to force the Bureau to show them the underlying documents, which they originally denied existed, but were eventually released. Why the lies and hiding evidence if there was no provable corruption, or if the informant was now considered unreliable after so many years of faithful paid service? The corroboration of the corruption was also reported by CNN astonishingly. The IRS whistleblower Gary Shapley testified that investigative leads that might have led to Joe Biden were not pursued in the late summer and fall of 2020. That in August 2020, an iCloud search warrant recovered a July 27 WhatsApp message from Hunter Biden to Chinese businessman Henry Zhao about an outstanding payment. Remember Biden's denials during the debate? CNN also reported on information supporting the Rob Walker testimony. Gary Shapley also claimed in his congressional testimony that Weiss's deputy, Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf, frustrated investigators' efforts to explore leads related to Joe Biden. Apparently, the investigators covering for Biden never wanted any questions asked about Joe Biden that might have provided and provoked uncomfortable responses so the fix was in and the whistleblowers knew it. The cover-up of the Biden crime family included the IRS and DOJ purposely holding off on preferred criminal charges on tax evasion and federal gun charges against Hunter Biden. Then, the sweetheart deal of a lifetime was agreed upon, but was blown out of the water when the federal judge hearing the case, Mariela Noreka, read the terms and refused to accept it. These terms had never been seen in the history of the U.S. federal judiciary and included that Hunter Biden, if he took the misdemeanor pleas on what were major felonies for anyone else, could never in the future be charged with any other crimes as investigations continued. Well, as a result, Hunter then entered a plea of not guilty on all counts. In another example of Biden corruption, Democrat presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who was challenging Biden in the Democrat presidential primary, was shut down by his party in favor of Joe. And then Biden denied him Secret Service protection, which is always afforded to candidates as a precaution. Given the Kennedy family's history, that tells the American public all they need to know. This forced Kennedy to run as a third-party candidate. His own party abandoned him because anyone else getting into office can open up far more in-depth investigations and expose far more corruption. Also, in an act of blatant stupidity and hypocrisy, after Musk divulged the government influence and interference in the 2020 election, the Biden administration halted Elon Musk's Starlink internet service from receiving government subsidies which Joe promised to Americans on the 2020 campaign trail, which would have been another option for internet service to 640,000 homes in rural America. The administration claimed that Starlink was no good and unreliable. 
Despite the fact that Musk gave it to the Ukrainian government and military for free in their war against Russia, and it has apparently worked superbly and was praised by the Biden administration for maintaining military communications. What may be of interest is former FBI agent Charles McGonagall, who supervised national security operations for the FBI in New York for nearly two years before his retirement in 2018, was recently sentenced to about six years in prison. He appeared to advance Albanian interest in the U.S. after he asked for and received roughly $225,000 in 2017 from a man who had worked for an Albanian intelligence agency, prosecutors said. In December, a federal judge in New York sentenced McGonagall to four years and two months in prison for conspiring to violate sanctions on Russia by going to work for a Russian oligarch whom he once investigated. The oligarch, billionaire industrialist Oleg Deripaska, was under U.S. sanctions for reasons related to Russia's occupation of Crimea. McGonagall pleaded guilty last September to concealing material facts, a charge punishable by a maximum prison sentence of five years. He admitted that he failed to report the loan, his travel in Europe with the person who lent him the money, or his contacts with foreign officials during the trips. Now, Hunter Biden and by proxy Joe and James Biden also made a lot of money working with oligarchs in Russia, Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, and counting. And many of those people were also under sanctions. But where is Hunter Biden's indictment, let alone Joe's? Or James? All of this was hidden by Merrick Garland and James Comey, the former FBI director, and Christopher Wray, the current director. Because the Bidens also failed to report money from foreign sources, as well as Hunter Biden's artwork sales, yes, artwork, and they did not pay taxes, but that was all covered up as well. It should be also noted that Hunter also failed to report his status under the FARA, or the Foreign Agents Registration Act for doing business overseas, like McConnell, when connected to the government or any governmental official. His father was vice president and then president. Well, that would qualify. The Obama-appointed DOJ and FBI Director Comey filed that same charge against Paul Manafort, who only had one violation. Hunter and the Biden crime family have a dozen violations and counting, but they were protected by the Obama leftovers in the DOJ, CIA, NSA, and IRS. Does anyone else see a double standard? Also, the Democrats, unable to recover from the failed Russia collusion hoax which imploded, which violated so many laws we would need a separate program, two failed impeachments on worthless charges, and they launched several politically motivated witch hunts and civil suits that, under normal circumstances, would never see a courtroom due to the lack of substantial evidence. Far less evidence than what we have on the Bidens. That's because keeping Trump off the ballot is more important to Biden and the liberals than securing our border, which Trump did and would do again. In fact, when Joe Biden made the public statement that he was not involved in any of the cases against Trump, nor ever interfered in any DOJ process, he apparently lied. And here's how. When the Hunter Biden case became too hot to handle, Garland appointed Weiss as the special counsel. The problem with that is that by law, only non-government affiliated attorneys may be appointed as special counsels. Weiss was chosen because the fix was in to cover the Biden crime family. They could not risk an outsider prosecuting any case against Hunter that may lead to Joe. Remember that sweetheart deal? Also remember that Garland's DOJ and the FBI under Comey and Ray covered up the fact that there was direct proof Joe Biden lied about his involvement with the overseas money machines, in essence, selling his offices of vice president and president to the highest bidders. That is proven by the fact that Joe Biden used six aliases in his government emails while interacting with the very people he claimed to have never met or spoken with. Using aliases on an official government email server is illegal, by the way. Fulton County, Georgia DA Fannie Willis, who charged Trump for trying to overturn the election for only asking for non-fraudulent votes to be counted, hired her lover, Nathan Wade an inexperienced attorney to handle the prosecution of Trump's co-defendants, 
and she paid him almost $700,000 in taxpayer money. But if Biden was not involved in pushing his DOJ and various state George Soros-funded prosecutors to get Trump, then why was Nathan Wade visiting the White House twice and billing the administration for 24 hours of legal services? Following up on the 50 years of stolen classified documents from when he was a senator, Special Counsel Herr, again illegally appointed, declined to prefer charges, stating that Biden was too old and mentally infirm to go to trial, basically saying a jury would take sympathy with him and he would be let off. Okay, but that means that he is also too mentally feeble to be president and the 25th Amendment should be invoked. Special Counsel Herr never denied a crime took place, just that a jury would take pity on him and not convict. He must not have polled the people where I live. And there's even more astonishing news. Biden removed the Houthi rebels in Yemen, who are funded by Iran from the terrorist watch list, while giving Iran billions of dollars and not enforcing the oil sanctions which brought them to their knees under Trump. As a result, Iran was able to make over $100 billion in revenue and fund not only the Houthis, but also Hamas and Hezbollah. And Hamas had the money and weapons to attack Israel, as well as make and sell drones to Russia for the war in Ukraine. I think they should check those Biden bank accounts again. Oh, one last note. It should be mentioned that DOJ and IRS and other agencies were ordered to monitor all bank transactions by American citizens related to Trump, MAGA, or Republican and conservative donations or transactions. The investigations into the Biden crime family are still ongoing. If there are any great revelations, we'll be more than pleased to do a part five follow-up. 2024 should be one hell of a ride indeed, and we will do Trump part two soon. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten History. If you like this episode, please consider becoming a channel member or joining our Patreon page. This would help us offset the ever-increasing cost of production. As always, please like, share, and comment. And if you have any show ideas, please contact us, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.